Right, just um, starting to get ready to replace the uh, the old uh, rusty uh, rusty headlamp, and so I've had to take the spaghetti wiring out. Now the only advantage I've got is that it was all connected before. So what I've done is I've just taken loads of photos of how the wiring was connected. So uh, then hopefully I can reconnect it. Um, basically, what have we got? We've got, yeah, three, uh, three lots of wires will go in the left, through the left hand sort of grommet hole. Uh, then three lots of wires on this side, uh, through the other side grommet hole. Okay. That, all that's for the ignition, so ignore that. That won't go in the headlamp. And then you've got the main spaghetti. That's the main loom, which will go in through the central uh, central hole. Uh, even even with the grommet removed, that's a nightmare trying to get it actually, you know, trying to get all that through the through the hole. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the uh, try and put the uh, new headlamp back in, and I'm going to leave the grommet on here. Try and feed this through and then, like, you know, put the grommet on afterwards. That's the plan. And then, when that headlamp's in place, we can uh, put the ignition, um, so sort of console, the binnacle, um, for the warning lights, etc., back on. Uh, but what I think I'm going to do actually, before, I'm, I'm ringing tomorrow, I'm going to see if I can replace these warning lights with LED uh, bulbs because they're so much brighter. I mean, they take less electricity, but they're just so much brighter than one light, you can actually see them in daylight. Um, and I'm also going to see about putting a LED bulb in the headlight and an LED bulb and tail light. I'm not sure I can. I'm not, I'm certainly not going to change the indicators. I'm going to leave them as standard bulbs because I know that there's a bit of a problem changing LED, uh, LED bulbs um, to, with indicators. Um, so, Rather than mess about, I just because they don't take much power, then they're, they're not used that much. Uh, and I'm not sure about the tail light because the tail light is one of these, um, and they basically it points downwards. It doesn't point, it doesn't point backwards like that. It points downwards. So I need to make sure if I do get an LED replacement that it works. It's a bulb that will work with a downwards facing bulb. Not they don't point backwards. They point so the light comes out like sideways. Okay, uh, right, but I'm going to get the uh, new shell and put it on, see if I can get the spaghetti back in through the main hole and then the uh, through the, the two lots through the side and then see if we can start wiring it back up again. I'm glad, I, I'm, I'm lucky that it was uh, pre-wired and I could take photos because there are some wires that definitely do not match up colour-wise. You know, most of them do. Um, but there are, there's some connections that, that simply, uh, you know, the colors don't match up. Uh, these, uh, the, like for instance, the, uh, the lighting for the speedo and the taco, I know that they're completely different colors uh, and so on. Uh, I'm not sure what this one is. Is that the, for the brake light? Oh, no, no, I think that one's for the brake light. Again, I don't think they're the same. These two for the are they for the must be for the headlight. They're definitely different as well, but for the headlight switch up here, because these these uh, grey uh, cables they go to the handlebar switches. Okay, right. Uh, yeah, they, they're for the handlebar switches. Uh, these two are for the illumination, and this one is for the front brake switch, and then. Everything else is the main the main loom. Right, um, <clears throat> managed to uh, managed now to wire everything back up. Sorry, the light's not great there, but uh, yeah, all the spaghetti is uh, is back in. Oh, this is the uh, <coughs> indicator uh, re uh, is it a relay. They called, um, which just simply just sits in the headlamp. Uh, so it, it doesn't attach to anything and it just sits there and sits on the wiring it's fine anyway we're all uh, back in position one thing i will say is i'm very glad that i did take some photos um because there's one or two wires here that, that simply don't match up 
and uh, you know, and, and you think, oh well, I'm only taking it apart for you know a few seconds, and then I'll remember it. And even, but I'm glad. I will tell you what, you know, even just for a few seconds, there was a there was a couple of connections there. I'm thinking, hang on, where does this one go? So do take photos all the time. Uh, right, and so next job will be to uh, fit the uh, uh, fit the uh, lens uh, to the um, to the headlight rim. Okay, just getting ready to put the uh, headlamp reflector into the new headlamp rim. Uh, and that's held there with these W clips. I think they are actually called a W clip. <laughs> How many of these have pinged away across the garage over the years? But there we go. The main thing about putting a new um, reflector in is to make sure it's the right way up. So we have these um, sort of these raised uh, bits, three, three of them around the uh, reflector. <clears throat> and ours, the one at one o'clock, is the one that goes these two uh, sort of arms on the the uh, rim that's that's the one one o'clock position uh, and here is the bottom that's the bottom that you know, clips onto the headlamp and then you can see although the um, uh, side light is uh, an angle that's how it should be for this particular uh, reflector if you look at the actual uh, lines on the lens you can see that they're dead uh, dead vertical okay so that's the main thing is to make sure you get the right sort of uh, raised uh, one of these three in in the right position then what we've got to do we've got a pair of pliers and we're going to fit these uh, w clips in uh, okay around the rim uh, they go under the rim and sit on top of the reflector and then you hopefully pair of pliers and just chuck the, get that other end in under the under the rim but they are notorious for flying off around the workshop we'll see i'll not put it on camera but we'll, we'll uh, see if we can get those w clips in around the rim and there we go we've got the w clips in without too much uh, too much problem and so the lens is now uh, securely in the new rim ready to go on the new headlamp shell so that's good and we've got a new uh, a new bulb coming uh, it, this did have a halogen bulb in it uh, incredibly powerful bulb fantastic but takes a huge amount of power um, so we're replacing it with a modern um, LED bulb I say modern the latest bulb which apparently is even brighter than the halogen bulb that we've taken out but only uses you know like 10 percent of the power a halogen bulb would have done so that's brilliant um so <clears throat> that'll go on when it's ready yeah i uh, just thought i'd have a look um so these are the two wires these uh the sort of uh, green and white and green and yellow wires here they're the ones that go to the alternator or come from the alternator up to charge the battery now there's only two wires, so I think that means it's definitely uh, a single phase standard alternator. So it's not a massively high powered alternator in here. Uh, so I think that's uh, another reason uh, for putting an LED bulb in rather than a, this, this red and green wire, they go to the gearbox neutral switch, so ignore those. But I think if it was three phase, <clears throat> I think I'm right in saying that we would have three wires. Uh, but we've only got two. Uh, just check there's only two coming there. Yeah, there's only two wires, so I'm sure that this is a, um, um, am I saying alternator in there, alternator on the other side. Um, but yeah, there's only two wires uh, coming out of the alternator. So I'm fairly sure, yeah, just check the other end, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's a standard alternator and uh yeah so good reason for fitting uh, uh an led bulb to the headlight especially if like me you ride all the time with your headlight on then that can really drain the battery uh, a high powered bulb um so i'll so that'll have an led bulb in 
I'm going to put LED bulbs in the console as well the, uh, for the warning lights. Um, but it's worth noting that these warning lights, being a Norville, they've all been changed to standard like warning lights. So this binnacle, as fitted to Mark III's, had really strange sort of connections for the, for the uh, warning lights. Not, not these, not these sort of standard ones that you would normally fit inside the headlamp. And if you've got the standard bulbs, then you can't change them to LEDs. But luckily, because these have been upgraded or changed to like earlier bulbs, <laughs> because the late ones are just a pain in the backside, because uh, these have been changed, I can put LED bulbs in. But be aware, if yours is a standard Mark III binnacle, then you can't change to LED bulbs. You can, but you have to change this uh, this mounting here and the actual uh, bits that go in the uh, warning binnacle. Uh, also, I won't change the um, indicator bulbs. They'll stay standard because you... It's a bit complicated to change them, and you don't use them that much, don't take up that much power. And also, I'm not going to change the um, stop and tail bulb, because, as I suspected, you can't do a direct replacement for that, because the bulb points downwards instead of backwards. Um, they don't do a an, an LED bulb specifically for that. And the only way you can change it, which I have done to both my tridents, is you get what's called a lighting board, you get rid of this completely, you get rid of the reflector, and there's a little flat board with loads of little LEDs on it, and that and that gives a fantastic bright light and doesn't use any power. But I'm not going to on this case, because it's quite a lot of work, and to be honest, all you really need to do is to change that headlamp bulb, because it's that that takes all the power. And uh, an LED headlamp bulb, don't worry about the others, and the only reason I'm changing these is not for the power, it's so that I can, you can see them, because they're so much brighter, the LED bulbs. Okay, yeah, I think we've got the standard uh, standard alternator fitted, not a three-phase. Um, and so that bulb, that original halogen bulb, would have taken a huge amount of power. So that's uh, that's going. And we're getting this, alleged, the bulb we're getting, allegedly, is even brighter than the halogen. With, with apparently a very good spread of light. I don't ride my bikes at night, but if you do, you need to get not just an LED bulb if you're going to change. You need to get one a good one because they're notorious for having a bad spread of light. Uh, you know, very uh, just a very sort of small beam of light. But apparently this one's got a good spread of light. I don't know. We'll have a go. We'll, we'll see when it's fitted. Okay, Coke. So here is... The new battery, so Moto Bat. I tend to use them. Them, they've always worked well for me. This particular one is an MBTX Twenty U. Okay, that's the particular particular model of battery I've got, and it fits nicely in the uh, you know in the bike because obviously that's one thing I'll be careful. You can buy these massive batteries; they're great, and of course they don't fit. Um. I use Motobat AGM, Absorbed Glass Mat Technology. Um, you can fit them anyway up, they won't leak. Uh, and as I say, as I said before, they uh, if they go flat, they, they, they don't tend to go flat, but if they do, it doesn't damage the battery at all, and you just charge them back up again. Um, and I found them, I find them very powerful, and you know, I, I would recommend them, so, you know. Uh, but anyway, this is for the Mark III. Got, got the biggest battery that I could get into that space uh, because obviously because of the electric star. You want a nice big battery. Notice the huge big uh, cables, which is what we need, which were not fitted to the original Mark III's. Right? They're much thinner cables for the earth and going to the starter motor. And, and uh, uh, you know, these are the... Uh, this is coming from the solenoid, of course. It's an uprated or at least a new solenoid. Uh, on these, not the original. Uh, but yeah, they up these much thicker leads, they create something like 20% more power just by changing the leads. What Norton were thinking when they put these little pokey little leads on, I don't know. So just by changing the leads gives you loads more power to the starter motor. Anyway, yeah, Motorbat, that's the battery I would recommend uh, for this bike. I've got a very slightly smaller one on mine. I've got MBT X16U. So not quite as powerful, 
because at the time I didn't realise I could get this one in. Um, but knowing that I can get this one in, I would I would go for this one. You know, the more power you can get, the better for the electric star. Right, now I've got the new battery. Uh, what I'm going to do is, I can't resist it any longer. I've taken the plugs out and I'm just going to give it a quick press on the button to see if the engine turns over. Let's see what we got. Only very quick because uh, I haven't got any oil in it and that at the moment. Uh, but I just want to see what we got. So here we are on the button. Wow. Oops. Oops. There we go. Blimey. Oops. Okay, so that was, wow, that turns over amazingly. So, uh, and that raunching sound was the, um, uh, the starter motor failing to engage a couple of times. You know, that was it was spinning without engaging. So uh, we will be taking the start motor off. So it might just be a bit sticky there. Uh, but wow, certainly turns over pretty well. And that battery, crikey. <laughs> That's what you need. That's what you need. You know, a huge, huge difference. Crikey, that spins, that cranks it over at some, some rate of knots, doesn't it? Fantastic. Obviously, coupled with a much larger starter motor and the... Uh, bigger leads but yeah fantastic 